Hello everybody, my name is Dan Egrud. I'm a faculty in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. For 20 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about using computer simulation in mechanical engineering. This is a part one talk. There is a part two talk. Uh, while this one, this first talk deals with just using computer simulation in general in mechanical engineering, part two is more focused uh, has to do with how folks are using uh, computer simulation uh, for autonomous vehicles and robotics. Uh, this is a tech talk at UWEPD. A couple of words about what this means. So these tech talks are part of the portfolio of programs run by EPD at UW Medicine. EPD stands for Engineering Professional Development Department. Um, and this is a department at our university uh, whose mission is to engage with folks who graduated anywhere from like last year to, I don't know, many years ago, who feel like um, they could uh, use uh, some help in improving their uh, skill set. They don't have the time to be on campus um, and they, uh, they are interested in improving their uh, skill set through online uh, programs. Um, EPD at UW Medicine is very well respected nationwide, is always ranked top 10 um, on the list of uh, distance programs uh, by the US News and World Report. There's a picture of Madison here, um, but as I said, this is a distance program, so you don't have to be physically here. Um, how can you improve your uh, skill set with EPD? Uh, at UW Madison, there are short courses, there are certificates, and there are degrees. A couple of words about these offerings. I'll start with Master of Engineering. So there are like uh, uh, six, six areas in which you can get a Master of Engineering. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to say that I'm associated with this one, uh, Data Analytics. Uh, so it, it's a, it's, the program is called MIDA, Master of Engineering in Data Analytics. It so, happens, it so happens that I am one of, one of the two academic directors, directors associated with this program. Other than that, there's a Master of Science program uh, in uh, Power Electronics, and there are certificates, and uh, you can Google this or just uh, email the folks of EPD, and they will be more than happy to, to talk with you. Uh, just back now to the regular program. Uh, just a couple of things about me. Um, I'm hailing from Romania. Um, I have an uh, under undergraduate degree in aerospace engineering. Uh, I got my PhD at the University of Iowa from where my accent. Um, that was one of my amazing job jokes. Um, I worked in industry for six years right after school. Um, then I worked at Argo National Lab uh, for one year in their math and computer science division. And then since November 2005, uh, I've been with the Department of Mechanical Engineering, UW Medicine. Uh, I want to give credit where it's due. I'm going to show a bunch of simulations and I'm going to talk about computer models and this and that. There's a lot of people behind that. And uh, these are members of the simulation-based engineering lab. Um, there are like more senior folks here. Uh, Radu is a scientist. Uh, Colin here is the person looking after the lab's supercomputer. Way is a postdoc uh, student. And then there's like a bunch of graduate students here and some undergraduate students uh, working in the lab. Also, we have uh, a group of collaborators. Probably you can tell they're from Italy. They're the cool guys uh, with shades and such. Um, they, we've been working with them for now uh, more than 12, uh, 12 years. Professor Alessandro Tassora and uh, two of his uh, students uh, here, Simone and Dario. Um, also, I want to acknowledge some funding sources um, that allowed us to work on these projects from National Science Foundation, Army, Department of Transportation. Um, I gratefully um, acknowledge the support from the Midwitter Foundation and Continental Mapping, a company uh, here in, 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 in Madison. Um, going back to the lab, uh, simulation-based engineering lab, this is, goes to this um, picture here in the corner. Uh, in the lab, we have two main trusts. One has to do with the multi-physics uh, computer modeling 
of, and simulation of mechanical systems at large. Um, and then the second focus area is simulation for autonomy. Um, as I said, the first topic here is going to be uh, discussed today. The second one is going to be discussed uh, in a separate uh, tech talk. Uh, the basic idea is that in general, the modeling and simulation effort that is broad and we do research in this area, we kind of like uh, use it ourselves to start looking into a specific area uh, in this case is autonomous uh, vehicles and ro uh, like robots but again that's going to be the topic of uh, a, a different talk um, so the emphasis in this talk is not going to be a research exposition it's going to be kind of like an overview of what goes on uh, in the lab uh, that being said Although it's not a research exposition, I would have an identity crisis um, if I if I didn't present some equations. So here they are, um, and the reason why I want to show these equations here is twofold. First, to explain that actually they look scary, but they're not that scary, uh, and I'm going to explain you know where they come from. And then secondly, I just want to say why we bother to use computer simulation. Like these these equations here, there are there are certain problems where the number of these equations reaches into millions, if not sometimes billions, and certainly nobody wants to sit down with uh, a pen in his or her hand and write these equations to start with, and then you have to solve the equations. Uh, that's where the computer comes into play. Uh, rather than us writing the equations, the computer figures out these equations and goes ahead and solves them according to the instructions that we give it. So uh, I'm not going to get into too many details here and you can just ignore this first equation but I bet that everybody knows this equation is Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration or the way it's written right here it says mass times acceleration is the sum of forces that act on a system. Um, there are some external forces, there are some forces that are produced in the articulations or joints um, present in the mechanical system and there are forces here that are associated with uh, the friction uh, and contact that can come up in a mechanical system. Then you have some uh, collection of equations that are associated with the presence of joints in your system. They, While these, these equations are differential equations, this set of equations uh, are simply algebraic equations. And here I'm not going to get into details, but this set of equations is associated with the, 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 the normal force that shows up when two bodies are in contact and the tangential force or friction force uh, if you have a non-zero friction coefficient, then there is a friction force that shows up uh, at the interface between the two bodies. But long story short, you have to formulate these equations, and if you solve these equations, then they will tell you how a mechanical system changes its state in time. In other words, how it evolves. And here, here is an example. This is a rover operating on granular terrain. If I extract the rover from the picture, I can do a post-processing step and I just look at how it moves in granular material. Um, and here there are like two million elements. As I said, probably for this you're going to have this system you're going to have something like I would guess close to 15 million equations, uh, if not more, depending how you solve the problem. But certainly you want to rely on a computer to understand how the system uh, changes in time. So as an example of an application where we, a, a real real world application where we use this sort of simulation, in a couple of months we're going to start uh, uh, a NASA project uh, with Carnegie Mellon and MIT and our mission will be to simulate not just any uh, rover like you saw in the previous uh, or two slides ago but a specific rover called Viper. Uh, this is going to be deployed in 2024 on the moon uh, to go look for, for water. Um, and what we're going to do through simulation, um, test how a, a new sensor design 
that uh, will help uh, the rover uh, not get stuck in in sand in a in a nutshell that's the idea um, so that was that was like a set of equations like five slides ago a set of equations that had to do with um, how um, how rigid bodies or flexible bodies move but then you can have fluid and fluid the way it moves is different than how for instance uh, a vehicle moves um, fluid the motion of fluid is is governed by a different set of equations here this first equation has to do with uh, the mass conservation and this one is just like in some some in some way is exactly the same equation that I showed you before is mass times acceleration is is force uh, this is the so-called Navier-Stokes uh, equation and it's a, a momentum balance equation uh, if you multiply by a rho here and you get rid of here this and this coefficient becomes a different uh, viscosity coefficient um, in the end you can look at it as like mass times the derivative of the velocity which is acceleration equals to the sum of uh, forces and this is pressure gradient this has to do with the viscosity and this has to do with applied forces such as for instance gravity now there are many ways to solve this problem like the set of this equation and this equation um, and in the lab what we use is uh, the so-called smooth particle hydrodynamics method uh, for spatial discretization. I'm not going to get into details. This is only one way to, to go about it. But at the end of the day, what you can look at is how a vehicle, for instance, moves through fluid. And in this case, you have here on the left the real world situation, and on the right, you have a simulation of a vehicle moving through water. And you might be interested in, like, okay, well, how deep can the water be if it flows, how fast it can flow before it's basically takes the, the the vehicle along and and so on um, so why would you use simulation uh, sometimes is the only way you can go about business for instance um, we have some friends in Europe who are using simulation um, because they want to send a, 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 a rover um, to one of the moons of Mars the gravitational acceleration is about 1700 uh, times less there so essentially you would weigh very 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 little on that planet on, on that moon and the idea is like if you start moving on granular material um, are you going to get stuck easier um, how are you going to move around and and so on certainly you cannot go there to test prototypes so you have to do it through simulation um, this is simulation is what enables a uh, build test build test build test uh, replacement because you cannot build and test as I said so other reasons for using simulation is uh, has to do with costs uh, if you have a computer model of a mechanical system that you uh, are about to design you can you can uh, make all sorts of changes to the design and just run simulation and understand how the 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 mechanical system would behave in reality uh, this is to be compared uh, with cutting steel like for instance if you want to uh, increase or the the mass of the vehicle and you want to see how much more it sinks into granite material for instance you don't have to uh, come up with a different prototype that is heavier you just simply change a couple of entries in a file you run a simulation and you get your your answer um, also if you use simulation it's significantly faster to develop uh, prototypes because for instance you can rely on parallel computing um, you can do computing in the cloud where you can launch hundreds if not thousands of jobs that are variations of a of a candidate design and you can understand trends you can understand sensitivities and such um, as a side note here I don't know if I'm familiar with if you're familiar with this but the Mars entry descent landing also known as EDL uh, called the seven minutes of terror these seven minutes were simulated millions of times just to understand what the risk is and how they can improve the design so that they make sure that they're not wasting uh, hundreds of millions of dollars um, on a flawed design so if it's so good then why doesn't everybody use simulation uh, well there are several reasons for that um, 
it is a, a steep startup process, uh, both in time of both in in terms of time and money. Uh, you need to build expertise. Many times, uh, people uh, approach simulation with this idea in mind that I'm going to spend one afternoon, I'm going to generate my model, and I'll get going. And it's just not like that. They're going to be disappointed. It takes it takes a lot of patience, and you need to really understand what you're doing before you can place any trust in the results that you get out of a simulation. You have to have good models. Uh, your insights are only as good as your models are accurate. If you have models that are not predictive, then they are going to tell you something, and that something is not close to what's going to happen in reality. Uh, also, you need to have a validation process in place. Um, and this goes back to the idea of like having good models. You really cannot give up on testing, because at the end of the day, you need to compare the simulation results, at least in a, in, in a handful of cases, with uh, what happens in reality, physical testing, so that you know if your model is right or not. Also, another thing that should not be discarded is that uh, the amazing compute powers that we can rely on these days uh, were not quite there if you go back a decade ago. Um, right now, you have designs um, like GPU, GPU cards. Uh, they have 50 billion transistors. They can launch literally hundreds of thousands of parallel threads of execution. Um, and the amount of com compute power that you have at your disposal is, is just tremendous. It's just a matter of like how you go about uh, using it. Um, now, I told you that uh, we're in the business of computer modeling and simulation. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Um, for the last 12 years, uh, we've been working on this uh, software infrastructure called uh, Chrono. Um, and this is in collaboration with friends from uh, Italy. And at this point, it's about like half a million lines of code. Um, it's an open source simulation engine uh, that is available on GitHub. And you can do all sorts of simulations. We call it multi-physics. You can, you can use it to simulate um, things like, for instance, the flow of granular material, the flow of fluid vehicles, and, and so on. Um, in case you're interested in this software, there are some details here online. You can go read about, uh, about it, go to the project website, download it from GitHub, and, and so on. I just want to highlight a couple of components to understand what it can do and how, and therefore how we use it in, or hope that is used by other people and how we use it in, for instance, autonomous vehicle simulation. Um, so there are certain modules to it. There is like a core, um, core component of this simulation um, platform. It's called Chrono Engine, that's the core. And it was developed primarily in Italy and as of 2005, sorry, 2007, 2008, we started working on it. And there's a Chrono Parallel, which uses parallel computing to accelerate certain classes of simulations that was developed in, by, by uh, our lab. And there's a Chrono Vehicle module that has to do with vehicle dynamics developed in the US, fluid dynamics in the US, FEA is developed by us and in Italy and granular dynamics is developed in, in US. So this is kind of like the multi-physics component to it, but then there, there are a couple of things uh, that have to do with mostly autonomy. So these modules have to do with sensor simulation. PyChrono is an interface that exposes the solver to, Chrono, to, sorry, to Python users. Jim Chrono is, if you're interested in machine learning and artificial intelligence, uh, I'll talk about it in the second talk if you're interested. And Synchrono, this is a tool that allows uh, teams of, of um, agents, uh, vehicles, robots to, to simulate together without penalizing the simulation time. So basically uses multiple compute nodes to uh, speed up the simulation of large scenarios uh, of uh, autonomous agents. Uh, again, what's what's uh, expressed here in gray font is going to be the topic of a second talk um, is um, right now the focus is going to be on this and i'm just going to go through them and explain what they do so let's start with uh, chrono engine so this is kind of like the core functionality and 
if you have mechanical systems, that's what it, it, it handles. It's just like, you know, the core of the, the solver. Chrono parallel, um, if you have very large problems um, that would run slowly uh, on one core, uh, Chrono Parallel uses multiple compute cores on a chip to accelerate the simulation. In this case, you have like a bowl here, which is made of uh, flexible material, and then you have like a stream of uh, probably these are like uh, uh, cereal or something. Um, but long story short, there's very low friction between the bowl and uh, and this table, and the material essentially eventually it will just move this off the table but we're not going to wait for that here um, the next uh, the next module has to do with uh, modeling and simulating vehicles um, and these vehicles can move on move on rigid terrain or on deformable terrain uh, more about this in the second talk then there is a module that has to do with fluid solid interaction and fluid solid interaction um, I don't know, the animation doesn't play very well, um, but it has to do with the motion of of uh, mechanical systems through fluids. And by the way, I know that the, the movie didn't come through very well, but uh, this presentation is going to be online. If you want to download, uh, you can check out the movie for yourself. Then there is another module that has to do with uh, finite element analysis. Um, and where you should look here uh, is at the wheels. The wheels are made of rubber uh, and the, the rubber deforms, the tire deforms. Um, incidentally, this is very uh, taxing on the computation. Um, this simulation took probably close to five days to, to, to run a, a vehicle with four uh, nonlinear finite element tires negotiating an obstacle while moving on uh, a bed of granular material that is made up of uh, close to one million uh, elements. The last one here is chronogranular and probably you don't pay too much attention to granular media but I just want to say that after water is is the second most handled media in in industry out there. So there's a lot of application in farming, pharmaceutical, um, even like uh, astronomy. It, 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 it's a very common problem handling of granular material. And there's a module in Chrono that, that handles its uh, dynamics. Um, another mod, another application that I want to share with you combines fluid soil interaction with granular and goes back uh, to representing large bodies of material, although it is granular, as a continuum. And here is a simulation of a landslide and it's inspired by the also 2014 landslide um, you cannot put things in perspective, but the dimension of this block of material here is uh, one kilometer, so uh, probably something like 0 0.7 miles. And these are some uh, some uh, large, if you think about it, like buildings or rocks. And you can see how the 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 mountain collapses and just moves topples over the uh, the rigid bodies which are proxies for, for buildings and such. Um, so just some closing thought, thoughts here. Um, reasons to simulate. Uh, simulation is using design uh, to answer questions like, will the mechanical system break? Uh, it's using control uh, to answer the question, can I make the mechanical system behave in a certain way? Um, if you want to optimize it, can I make the mechanical system be really light or fast or inexpensive and so on? or in a certain quantification uh, answering questions like okay well how much trust should i put in this design is my design a good one will it meet the 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 scope or the goal that it was uh, uh, designed to uh, to deal with um, i want to close here uh, with one slide uh, saying that um, here at uw medicine uh, in the lab, we have uh, what is called the Computing and Engineering Forum event. It's three days, there's a lot of uh, talks going on, um, and the talks about just using uh, simulation engineering uh, in general, but also about using the software infrastructure that I talked about uh, in this presentation. If you're interested, email me or email someone at EPD. Uh, this is like, for instance, this 
this event is an example of uh, um, initiative that if you end up being an EPD student, you can register for and participate. Almost every year we have folks from like in the past, Harley Davidson, John Deere, and so and so on. They take courses with EPD, and they also sign up to 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 be a part of uh, of this en en enriching activities that take uh, part uh, in our campus. Um, with that, thank you very much for taking the time. I said it will be 20, 25 minutes. I think it was like 26 minutes or so. Um, again, this is the part. It is part one. Uh, there's another tech talk. Part two, it has to do with um, uh, simulating autonomous vehicles and robotics. Thank you for your time. Much appreciated.